All right, we are back from the Halloween Hoopty Fest at New Hampshire Motor Speedway, which is, of course, in New Hampshire. This is a Halloween themed race, so we have Halloween themes that show up. That's always great. We love seeing skeletons on cars, things like that, and also just random crap attached to the top of the car. That stuff's great. Love seeing it. Yeah, and something that happened at this race, the Lemons Rally Fall Failage Tour, also ended at this race on Saturday. They were supposed to all show up Saturday afternoon. There would be a big trophy ceremony, and then they would do a lap of the track after the track went cold. Well, that was great for just about everybody, but there was this one couple that couldn't make it to the start. They had some other thing going on, then they couldn't make it to the second day. They had something going on, and oh, we're going to catch up. And finally, they called Alan Galbraith, who's running that rally. He says, look, we're going to make it to the very end. We're going to show up. We're going to be there for the lap to the track. They got there literally, I saw it, 10 seconds after the track closed its arm and they couldn't get on the track. So we told them, hey, look, why don't you stick around? You could be the pace car on Sunday. It was pretty great. Jay, when was the last time we had a pace car? Oh, we, we stopped doing pace cars like 10 years ago. Pace cars are always a disaster. You can go a little bit faster. It's a bank turn. Yeah. You won't skid out. <laughs> So, but terrible at this race, we had a mid 2000s Ford Mustang, uh, which had blue balls mounted on their tow hitch, you know, very classy team. Uh, now, naturally, one of the many times it was being towed in, the, uh, the tow hitch pulled out and the Mustang lost its blue balls uh, in the paddock. That was but terrible. Hella sweet, however, was the Team Hori Bull and their uh, Taurus. They did this up as Moxie. They're from Maine, so it was all very on brand. And these guys were totally living. They're like, have you ever tasted this stuff? It, it tastes like cold piss. And, and it totally did. Also, but terrible at this race, a Chevy Corvette done up like the USS Harley Earl. Now, what is the USS Harley Earl? We have no freaking idea. And the car was terrible, as you would expect from a Corvette. Hella sweet Futility Motorsport. They brought a COVID-protecting bubble for their Saab station wagon just to make sure that it stayed safe. The Lementarians, of course, staples of races in the Northeast, brought their giant 1980s Cadillac Fleetwood. That thing is hella sweet with the big Hearst shifter on it and way faster than it ever should be. Hella sweet, guys. And I got to add, they also turned their wood chipper truck into a sauna. So that was pretty good. <laughs> Hella sweet Century Motor Cars. They brought their Mitsubishi Lancia. In social media, we called these guys out derisively as a buy here, pay here lot. And they came back there and said, we actually are a buy here, pay here lot. And then slapped their stickers all over every car in the paddock. Now, the Lancer guys had some teammates in another car. And by teammates, I mean teammate. It was one guy running this Audi that had also been uh, from the buy here, pay here lot, fittingly called 11th Chance Racing. Now he took breaks to have a sandwich and you know take a nap, things like that. But we, we're starting to see people driving solo in that way and we love seeing that. That's great, hella sweet. But terrible, hit him with the hind, put a turbocharger on the V6 Cologne powered Ford Ranger at hella did not work. It did not work so much that they actually removed the turbo and it ran way better on Sunday. But terrible at this race was an LS swapped Porsche 914. Why you ruin classic $500, my ass. Uh, now, here's something we started to see in Lemons recently, which is people bringing cars that are just totally overbuilt for Lemons. And this was kind of that, uh, you know, 350 horsepower in a 914. Guess what happened? Just guess. About four laps into the race, they stuffed it right into the front straight wall. Uh, that was pretty much it for their weekend. This happened at the following race with a different car. So maybe there's a takeaway somewhere in here. Maybe, Jay, can you elucidate on that a little bit? Well, yeah, I would just say there's a point at which you uh, get a little big for your britches and then the car crashes you into the wall. As a result, I think this is the universe taking care of business. However, I do want to say this night 14, it was gorgeous. I mean, it was really a nicely done car. Not a Lemons car, but a really nicely done car. It got 10,000 laps. I would have loved to have seen this thing run all weekend. Hella sweet, a new team showed up. And before they arrived, they asked Judge Phil, you know, hey, do you have any theme ideas you want to see? And Phil said, 
Well, you're bringing a Miata, and it's the 100th anniversary of Mazda Toyo Kogyo coming up. You know, they started out as a cork company, so, you know, think about that. Here you go. Hell sweet at this race was the Class C winners, which was, of course, Sputnik. That is our friend Sasha from uh, Maryland, with some guest appearances by uh, David Mills, Nelson's Legends legend. Uh, that's hard to say. Anyway, uh, they towed their uh, Nissan Access with two X's all the way from Maryland using just a Ford Escape Hybrid and a tow dolly. That was hella sweet. Usually they've blown that thing to hell every time they've run it. Somehow it stayed together. They won Class C with, like, the fourth slowest car in the paddock. Fantastically done. Also hella sweet, and also with Nelson's Ledge's history, uh, the Paddock Saboteurs and their Nissan. Uh, Eric, you want to go into this? Yeah, so back in 2010 or 2011, I don't remember, there was a race in California where everybody got bad gas overnight and accused Paddock Saboteurs not realizing that, you know, it had maybe rained and maybe their crappy fuel systems would just leak like a sieve. So there was this ongoing thing on the internet about the paddock saboteurs. These guys brought their car to the next race as the paddock saboteurs. That was hella sweet. Hella sweet to see them back after about 10 years. And hella sweet on the subject of hella old, tired, beat-ass, redundant, oopty, awful cars. Rusty Tear Racing, they are still running the very first Fiera that ever ran in Lemons. This was originally Mike Austin's car back at uh, Altamont. It's still out there. It is no better than it was when Mike ran it. And when Mike ran it, it sucked. Heroic Fix, this race went to Bright Ideas Racing and their Chevy S10. Now this is uh, a team that is run by a guy named Glenn Farney, who is a, a lineman in New England who was registered for the race in Thompson, got called away to fix all of the power outages, including at the racetrack. So Glenn helped restore power to the racetrack at the race he wasn't racing at. That was heroic to start. He rolled his entry over to New Hampshire and was like, oh man, I had three extra months to, to build this thing, make it great. It of course blew up on practice day. He spent all weekend looking for a replacement. The one he found was a later one with different fuel injection setup and a different transmission bell housing and all of the normal GM things that will stymie you over the course of the weekend. He spent about 36 hours swapping engines, finally got it on the track, heroic fix. Yeah, I got screwed trophy went to Dale and Ken. Dale Stripple, Ken Kodak. So there are grid guys, they're track in, they're track out. They're really the only people who know what they're doing in the whole goddamn outfit. And with COVID going on, it's just kind of worked out. They had to work every single race, more or less this year. And they just got in their car and they drove the race and then they waved flags for 72 hours and they laughed and they chuckled and they thought it was great. We don't understand why they just keep putting up with us, but they're getting screwed for having to do it. Regional trophy at this race, we called There Are Other Hobbies, you know, and it went to the League of Legitimate Nigerian Businessmen. Now, it's pretty rare in Lemons that we really question a team's dedication to their theme, but really, these guys went so far over the top that even we were like... Uh, uh, this was, of course, the OnlyLambs.com, which <laughs> they set up as a subscription-only uh, pseudo-lemon, pseudo-pornography site that really 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 called us all it was disturbing let's just so say it was disturbing. deeply deeply disturbing i'm totally out of words and most it wasn't entirely because it came at our own expense but but mostly looking at a picture of yourself in the most disturbing fashion was a little more revolting than a normal lemons race well done head gasket Judge's choice went to the stinking Shinkin. This is an old Audi A6. And, you know, New Hampshire is like the Alabama of New England, basically. And this Audi is exactly what you would expect. It's got a snowmobile engine in the back. It's kind of chain drive, I think, into the rear differential on the car, which is not connected to the rest of the car. And at some point, they got it rigged up where the tip in is at a certain rate, and then hey, the snowmobile starts and man, drives the car. It adds power in critical junctions under acceleration. This is the theory, and it worked so flawlessly that they finished 61st overall. 
Organizer's choice at this race was a super easy decision. It went to Valve Tap Racing in their 1978 Chrysler Cordoba. Cordoba. This Cordoba. Cordoba. Had the 400 cubic inch V8, which is the one that people want. Uh, now the owner himself. People want. Yeah, the, you, there's both quotes in there. Uh, you know, having personally dealt with the late Chrysler B body guys, I can tell you that they are all completely f-ing insane, even for Mopar people. This owner happens to be one of those late B body guys, and he spent a lot of time making this thing look great. It didn't run long, it didn't have to, it's a Chrysler Cordova. Cordova. Fantastic organizer's choice. The IOE, the very top prize, the index of affluency, they went to Oscar's Junk Heap and their Javelin. Manny and Chris, they've been running this car for a while now, it has always been just terrible. It's incredibly rusty, the wiring bursts into flame, the fuel stops flowing, everything that could go wrong with this car has gone wrong, they've blown up all kinds of motors. This time they more or less got it right. They got it right enough to finish. They had a top third, I think, of the field. They did great. They had a great time. This car's been trying. It's deserved it. It finally won it. Well done. Here's Lemons in a Nutshell. 